Hi everyone. Today I'm out here on a beautiful winter day in the foothills of northwestern Connecticut. And I'm out here for three reasons today. One, it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's kind of cold. It's in the high 20s, but it's sunny and I'm off from work. And two, I need to get some hiking in before the foothills trail. The third reason I'm out here is I figured I would record a YouTube video today talking about kind of like what I bring with me for winter hikes, especially being from the Northeast. It can get really cold out here and it's essential that you're prepared. So I'll just show you kind of like what I bring when I go winter hiking, my layering system, all that, and just kind of bring you along on the hike with me. here at the summit now I just layered back up I was just hiking up with this bay leaf long sleeve shirt it's really smart when you winter hike to start cold you can always get warm as you're hiking but if you start with all your layers on as you hike you're gonna get warm and you're gonna start sweating and if you sweat through your layers it's gonna be a problem because when you stop at a viewpoint like I am right now and you go to put all your layers on because you're getting chilly you're not moving anymore your body's not producing that body heat you're gonna go to put on all your layers and they're gonna be soaked and that's when you're gonna get chilled and that's when there's a risk of hypothermia so always start cold when you're hiking in the winter so I just start with any long sleeve shirt this one is the bay leaf I forgot the name of it I can link it though in my description it's a long sleeve shirt, it has, it has thumb holes, and this zips down for if you need some airflow. And then when I get to the top of a mountain or just stopping to take a break, I'll put layers on and then shed them if need be again if I'm gonna start climbing. So I just put on my light heart gear, micro grid mid layer. My hat is back on. I forgot sunscreen today like an idiot, so. Uh, wearing my hat right now and my sunglasses to try to protect part of my face but I'm not gonna be able to hang out here at the summit very long. I have on these fleece lined pants from the brand is called Artix. I found them on Amazon. I was trying a bunch of different fleece lined pants from REI, from Bayleaf and I just didn't like any of them. These are the best ones I found. I like them because they actually have an open bottom a lot of the pants that are fleece lined that I found are tight, tight to your skin down here, um, almost like a jogger, and they're just not comfortable for me. I like to have an open bottom leg. These are fleece lined. They've got some nice pockets. Um, there's some right here. Nice and warm, so really comfy material, stretchy. Uh, that was another issue I was finding with uh, a lot of fleece lined pants is they just weren't stretchy. Like if I'm hiking, I might be taking big steps up and I need to have mobility. So these pants are really, really great. I'm on edge walking down the trail right now. Last time I was up here was about a month and a half ago. And right around here, there was a big fat bear right off the trail. He was just hanging out. I was with my friend hiking. We were talking about something and I just happened to glance out of the corner of my eye and saw a huge bear who was really fat and chunky. The bear did not care at all. He just stayed right there and just kept digging at the ground. He looked up at us, kept digging at the ground. At first we ended up walking away pretty slowly while still saying like, hey bear and talking to the bear. But then we realized he really didn't care. It was the closest bear encounter I had ever had. And this bear was super cute. Let's go over what I bring on a day hike when it's winter time and it's cold. So extra layers, first and foremost, I usually hike with a long sleeve and a mid layer on. Sometimes I'll shed the mid layer. Fleece lined hiking pants, warm socks, and warm hiking boots. 
I bring a pair of gloves. These are the Outdoor Research. Um, I forgot the name of them. They're a pair of Outdoor Research gloves. They've got like the touch screen and they're nice and warm. This is a balaclava. It's like a face covering for when it's really, really cold. If I'm like in the White Mountains or somewhere where it's over 4,000 feet in the winter, typically we'll want this and it covers like here and here and just leaves like my eyes pretty much. Also carry some sunglasses, which I'm gonna put on right now because the sun is absolutely blinding me. Sometimes I'll bring a fuel canister, my pot and my stove if I'm gonna cook. If it's not too cold out, I can usually get away with making like hot chocolate or something, which I'm going to do today. Some type of windbreaker or rain jacket. An insulated layer. This is a just basic puffy jacket. It's synthetic. A down or synthetic insulating layer is really important. This is my first aid kit. Just has all the basics in it. Open this up. It's got all the essentials, emergency blanket, bandages, alcohol wipes. It's all bagged up in here, but there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, safety pins, tape. Always, always, always keep a solid first aid kit in my bag with an emergency blanket. That is key. You need some type of shelter or something that's gonna keep you warm. God forbid you get stuck somewhere or you start getting really, really cold and can't warm yourself up. This little thing is my newest addition to my pack. This is my light source. It is absolutely tiny. I wanna say this is only like an ounce. This is the Trustfire MC1 little um, magnetic flashlight. This thing gets so bright. I'm gonna have to insert some clips for you guys, but this thing is so bright. It can get up to, I forgot what the lumens was. It was like 2000 lumens or something, um, which if you didn't know is about as bright as the flashlights used in search and rescue and stuff. So this thing gets really, really, really bright. You can actually feel the heat if you put your hand up to it when it's on and there's different settings and stuff. Um, it is magnetic, the back right here. I like to keep it in my hiking backpack but occasionally if I'm going out at night with my car or if I'm going like on a longer road trip, I'll put this in my car. It will magnetize to anything. So um, we've actually used this to do car work before. It's good for just sticking it onto any part of your car that's magnetic and it'll be an easy way to get light if you need to work on something on your car. Um, but this thing is tiny and it's perfect for my hiking backpack because it is so light and small but so so bright and powerful. Trustfire actually sent this to me. They asked if I wanted to try out one of their headlamps or one of their flashlights and I decided to go with this right here because I figured with how small it is and how light but how bright it can go it was the perfect light source for my hiking day pack. So part of the 10 essentials is having a light source. So whether that's a headlamp or a flashlight, you always wanna make sure you have a light source with you. Uh, you never know if you're gonna get stuck on the trail when it gets close to dark. If you get injured or you're moving a little slower than anticipated or the trail just ends up being longer than you thought it was gonna be, you never know if you're gonna get stuck. When I go backpacking, I bring a headlamp, but on a day hike, just a flashlight or a headlamp is fine. If you guys are interested in this little flashlight right here, I have a link in my description. You can get 20% off. Thank you again, Trustfire, for sending me this to try out. I actually will be keeping this for good in my day hiking pack. Tylenol. Never know if you're going to get like hurt or get a headache or something. This is extra strength. I always bring some type of painkiller. This is my bathroom kit. It's just some toilet paper. Usually a trowel is in here. I don't have one in here right now. And hand sanitizer. Never know when duty calls in the woods. Of course, if you're winter hiking, micro spikes. Micro spikes are always in my pack in the winter from like November to April. These do not leave my pack. You never know if the trail is gonna be icy. These will save you from busting your ass. I don't have snowshoes, so I just have to be careful of what the conditions are on trail so I'm not post-holing the trail. I only hike if the trail is packed down snow, but if you have snowshoes, that's another good thing to bring with you on a winter hike. I bring snacks. I have a couple more in my bag, but snacks and plenty of water. I've already drank some, but I have more. Plenty of water. And another thing I like to do typically is bring some form of way to filter water just in case I didn't bring enough water. I can purify or filter some water on trail and have more water. The only reason why I didn't bring a filter today is because of the freezing temperatures. I didn't want to have to carry it on me. And I have my pot, my stove, and a fuel canister on me. If need be, I could boil some water if I needed it. Today I also brought my fanny pack. This just has like some extra snacks in here. Uh, some form of protection if I'm hiking alone and um, 
like wallet and keys I'll keep in here typically. Can't forget on my pack, I've got my Kula cloth. This is also goes with like my bathroom kit. These are really, really awesome. If you have to go to the bathroom, just snaps right off really quickly. You can wipe, uh, pee, nothing else. Should have brought something to mix this with. All right, I am making my way back down to my car now. I'm just taking this like easy, like, I don't know if it's like an access road or something. And then it connects back up with the trail a little further down. But this hike was around three and a half miles. It's a loop and like 650 feet of gain, which is nothing crazy, but it's a good quick little workout. And I like the view at the top. And on the way down, there's like that campground where I was able to set up at that picnic table, take some videos and make some hot chocolate. All right, y'all, another hiking tip is don't use all trails because unless my Apple Watch is off, this says that I've hiked 970 feet and I've already done 3.78 miles. All right, well, all trail says that this hike is three and a half miles out, uh, loop and like 650 to 700 feet of gain and my Apple Watch is clocking over 900 feet of gain and just over three and a half miles now, so. I don't know if the Apple Watch isn't accurate. It's not like a Garmin or anything, so it might not be accurate, but I would advise not trusting all those trails. I'm a hypocrite when it comes to that. I have always used all trails, but I am aware that the elevation gain and mileage could differ based on what all trails is telling me. Down we go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed just like a little talk about what I bring when I'm winter hiking, layering, 10 essentials, all that good stuff. Um, like I said, I'll have mostly everything I talked about linked in my description if you're interested in any of it, along with the 20% off code for Trustfire products. They have headlamps, flashlights, bunch of good light sources. So if you guys are interested in that, that'll be in the description. and. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.